During COVID, the whole world was going through a lockdown. Businesses were under pressure. There was so much uncertainty. People didn't know what the world would look like afterwards. During this point, we actually took on the biggest project of our careers. We took a 670,000 pound office and we'll change that within 12 months to 10 self-contained apartments that'll be worth 2.5 million pounds. I'm hoping you're taking notes because I'm gonna run through exactly how we did this. Now, the property in question was on the open market. What do I mean by open market? Open market being it was available for everyone to have a look at and put a bid in to purchase. Now, this was on Estate Gazette. Estate Gazette is an alternative portal to Right Move and Zoopla, and it's typically used by commercial agents. Now, when I was running through the website, I saw this detached building in Burnham, Buckinghamshire, and the property had loads of potential. They had two undercrofts, potential to possibly go into the loft, and it had quite a decent floor space on the first floor. Now, you'll be able to see from the photos, the property was actually quite a modern built building. It was built sort of in the 1980s, so it's fairly modern. It would have cavity walls, so fairly easy to ensure it'll be insulated and meet those EPC targets. Now, let me run you back to when I actually went to visit with Sanjay. We're walking around this building, and I remember other property developers saying, look, uh, I don't think it's really worth it because you're only gonna get five flats in here. The building's up for 700,000. With the costs and so on, you're probably just gonna break even. And I remember nudging Sanjay, I'm like, these guys are missing a massive trick here. What I meant they were missing a massive trick was we actually understood the rules of permitted development and prior approval. We knew what we could actually get from this building. I said to Sanjay, I think we could potentially get eight to 10 flats in here. And eight to 10 flats would actually provide a massive potential. If we can hit the 10 flats, we can make seven figures for the first time in our lives on a deal. So the first thing we actually did was we put in an offer for 650,000 to the agent. Now, this price was rejected. We ended up securing this for 670,000 pounds. Now, as we hadn't actually purchased the building at that moment, the first thing that we actually did was put in a fallback option. When I mean fallback option, this basically just means this is our worst case scenario. And if the agent or the seller sees these plans here, they're probably not gonna pull the deal thinking the building is a gold mine. So we put in a planning application to change part of the ground floor and the whole first floor to five self-contained flats. Now this was put through a prior approval process. This process takes 56 days for the council to approve. If they don't approve it within this period and it's deemed approved. Now for us, we're quite fortunate the council approved this within 56 days. We went ahead, we purchased it on exchange, we put in a planning application for eight self-contained flats. And once that was approved, we went for 10 self-contained flats. Now, let me explain how we did this. We understood the loft had not quite enough height to meet the minimum headspace standards. But well, we noticed the first floor had really high ceilings and we thought we can actually drop this down probably a half, one and a half foot to two foot. This will actually create additional head height in the loft. Now by doing this, this will create two additional flats within the loft. Then the other aspect that we looked at was the undercroft. Now with the undercroft, it actually covered by the whole fabric of the building, even though it's not totally concealed, you're able to actually put in a prior approval application to include the undercroft. Now the undercroft actually added the three additional flats to the building. So we'll, with the existing floor plans, we'll have five going into the loft. That's another two, so we have seven. And by utilizing the undercroft, that will add three. So that gives us our 10 self-contained flats. So once we obtained planning for the self-contained flats, we went ahead and applied for or full planning for external changes. And for those that don't know, you need to apply for full planning for any external changes to a commercial building, or even if it's residential and it's flat, you still need to apply for full planning permission for any external changes. So the external changes included replacing the windows from the wooden windows that it currently had to new style PVC, and we wanted to go with a little bit of a modern or sort of slate gray look. The other changes that we needed to do was apply for loft windows. And then the final changes will be to brick up the undercroft. Now, the first two changes 
so the windows went through fine but the council failed our planning application to actually brick up the undercroft due to as the building hadn't at that point been changed to residential it said it would lead to a loss of car parking spaces for the office and it'll make the office unviable we ended up having to put this through appeal which took six months we actually went ahead with the works and built on the undercroft anyway along with using building control because we we're quite confident it was going to get approved but it took six months planning inspector came down had a look at the building and approved that so that actually gave us our 10 self-contained flats so one thing myself and Sanjay have been doing since 2013, so 2013 was when the first prior approval rights came in that allowed conversion of commercial offices to residential. We fully understood the rules of the game. That basically allowed us to play the planning game and understand what aspects we could actually implement and what wasn't available to us. And now we've continuously been doing this with the new changes that came in in 21 with bringing class E, class MA into effect. So this basically relates to more commercial properties being able to be converted to residential use. And those of you that have been watching the news, there's gonna be a new prior approval right that will allow you to convert a house into two dwellings. We'll be waiting for the papers for that to come out, analyze what basically you can do, what the constraints are, what we, what are the minimum standards that we sort of need to make. This will include like floor space, natural light, etc. Once they're all out there, it's then easy for you to implement. If you want to play the game, make sure you understand the rules of the game and the game is yours to be played. So with my experience in property, I've seen so many developers rely on their architects not fully understand the rules. And when they've done their developments and I've gone around to have a look at it, I'm like, well, you could have probably got one or two extra flats in here. And they're not sure how. So these are costly mistakes that impact them because you end up leaving more money in the deal. That's less money that comes out to put towards their next deal. So let me run you through the numbers on this building. So we actually purchased this for £670,000. We took a short-term loan with Shawbrook Bank. Before we actually took the loan out, we got a valuation done on this. And this was a commercial valuation. So we got basically the current value of the building vacant, what it's worth. And then we got a valuation done, what it would be worth once we implement the 10 flat scheme. The valuer came back and said this would be worth 2.25 million. Now this gave us the assurance to go ahead, we we're doing the right thing because at that price, we were sure that we'd have all our money back out. By the time the building was actually complete towards the end of 2020, we got it revalued due to the finish and also as prices have actually risen coming out of COVID, the building was worth 2.5 million pounds. Now our build costs, including all legals and other costs were 500,000 pounds so that's our, our total investment in the building was 1.17 million pounds so in terms of money in the deal we actually had to put down a 30 percent deposit so that is 201,000 pounds normally you have the option of using development finance where a site surveyor will come out and pay you in arrears in terms of the build because at that point there was no guidance for site surveyors and rig surveyors to come out we had to build this cash so we raised 500,000 pounds from our own savings and we used this towards the build so we were totally in for 701,000 pounds so once the development was all done all the units rented out for a combined total of nine thousand nine hundred and ninety five pounds per calendar month so the mortgage payments were six thousand one hundred and forty three pounds there's 200 pounds monthly running cost this is just in regards to the bin service um, and communal lighting costs that we have so this leaves us with a net profit of three thousand six hundred fifty two pounds which basically equates to an annual profit just shy of forty four thousand pounds so the total cost of this project, including the purchase, build, etc., was 1.17 million. And we took this to 2.5 million. So that's a profit of in excess of 1 million pounds. Now we refinanced and kept this project simply for one reason, we don't sell. And I'll explain to you why we don't sell. Now, house prices tend to double every 10 years, rents double every 20 years. So without you having to work really hard, your money's actually working really hard for you. The other point to take into account is if you sell, you'll incur capital gains tax. However, if you just hold on to the asset and maybe refinance that in five years time, 10 years time with the capital appreciation, you'll be able to take that money out tax-free and use that to build further wealth. 
and you still have cash flow coming in each month. Now, this isn't a one-off. Just have a look at our socials, our Instagram, LinkedIn posts. You can see we're doing this consistently. We do typically between 20 to 30 projects a year. 10 of them tend to be for clients. The other 10 to 20 are our own. If you've got value from this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and please leave a comment. And we look forward to seeing you on the next video.